I'm going to be doing some work on my 2020 Harley Davidson Triglide today, and what I'm going to be doing is installing these DK Custom Next Gen 13 inch uh, Triglide shocks. Now, when you order these things, they're going to ask you all kinds of questions like how much do you weigh? How much does your passenger weigh? How much does your accessories weigh? And how much does your luggage weigh? And, and how often do you ride single? How often do you ride double? How often do you ride full? Anyway, and then they use all that input to uh, pre-adjust uh, the preload uh, for your information that you gave them. Uh, and uh, once they set that preload, uh, you shouldn't have to mess with that preload again. Anyway, I'll be putting these guys on. Uh, I don't know how long it'll take me, but it'll take me a while, I suppose, because I'm pretty slow. And also, I'm going to install these DK Custom uh, Comfort Convertible uh, Lift Kits. But anyway, I'm going to get to it, and uh, yeah, I'm going to get to it. All right, let's sneak around back here and see what we got. We got uh, two jack stands here, two uh, jacks, and a couple blocks of wood. And uh, let's just get together and put this under there. Okay, as long as I got it up in the air here and uh, these things are pretty, pretty uh, tight, I cracked them just a little bit. I'm going to check for rock and roll here for the axle bearing retainer plate, okay? I don't feel any play at all on that thing. No slop that way, back and forth, and no slop this way. The bike's got a little over 22,000 miles on it, so yeah, no slop whatsoever that way. All right, let's go check the other side. So here I'm just checking the axle retainer plate slop and there was not any. Then I went and proceeded to remove the left tire and then I proceeded to remove the right tire and then I lowered the jacks onto the jack stands. Okay, this is what it looks like underneath. The block on the axle, the jacks on the uh, frame member right there. And then over here, we are on the other left side. Okay, the first thing I do is uh, take this uh, knob out and uh, there's some uh, in the, take these knobs out. And then back here, there's a couple brackets back here. I just need to get, there they go. I got that one out. And there's one on this side also that I need to get out. And they just pop out of there, no problem. So yeah, there's just they're in a little, little guide in there and they just pop them out and I'll pop that out. And I'm gonna take this screw out right here, right there, and just uh, pull this whole mechanism out. I'll disconnect it at the shocks also. See there, I got the socket on right there. And there's a, uh, Connected in right there. And I just have to keep twisting it right there till this thing, till this thing, till this uh, thing comes out. Okay, so I have a one fourth inch wrench, a five sixteenths inch socket, and it's just easier just to, for me to get it out this way. Just keep doing it until it, uh, until it comes out. All right, got this big old long screw there. Put it off to the side. See if this thing pulls out now. It just kind of pulls out like so. See, there it is. Now I'm just gonna go down to the shocks and disconnect them off the shocks and try to pull everything up through here. All right, let's just go in here and take a look at this real quick. Show you what I got going. Uh, this wire runs down to this uh, wire. This uh, uh, tubing runs down to the shock on that side, and this tubing runs down to the shock on that side, and I got them loose. Uh, I'll show you in a minute, but it just fell down there. That's good, I'm gonna get that and show it to you. All right, what we got is this thing here. It goes, it was behind there. 
and the tubing runs down inside the slot and then under this one and it's kind of just clamps on there and I was able to just uh, undo this first one right here and then just kind of get it to come out from these two guys here and uh, yeah then it just as you saw and heard it fell and the same with this other guy over here he's got one on him but I haven't been able to get him out yet so okay this is where the uh, where the tubing comes down on the shock this is a left sided shock here at the top and I'm just gonna open that up and hopefully not too much oil will come out I'll put a rag up there uh, I'll undo this like I say and then put a rag up there okay so I put a few pads down right by the shock there so when I uh, disconnect it up there if anything leaks it'll drop on that pad okay of all things it's got a 10 millimeter on there and I'm gonna crack her now here we go oh there no, no look at that oil drip see the oil drip Man, stop I heard it was just supposed to be a little bit not forever come on it quit finally I'm gonna pull that out right up to the top right away so it quits leaking pull that bolt out of there turn it out bolt is out and there's a washer right here I don't know there's two of them all right I'm gonna pull it up right now all right let's see how it works here it is right here so let's pull it up and so far no look okay here it comes here it comes here it comes, here it comes. There it is, see it? Okay. I dropped something there, you see it? You see it drop? What was it? I think it was a, oh yeah, it was. Two uh, copper gaskets. Okay, all right. Okay, so while you weren't looking, I went down there on the right shock and disconnected the banjo bolt to the hydraulic line. And it leaked about the same amount as the left side did. And now I'm just going to pull the adjuster knob out uh, and the lines. All right, here's this guy. And then we're just going to pull this, this piece. There. Looks like it is. There it is. Got it out. And uh, it came out all right. A little bit of the back I was talking about. And uh, I recovered the... Uh, copper uh, washers on both of these things so okay we're good okay I'm gonna have to this is the the park brake bracket I'm gonna undo that bolt and that bolt and just kind of drop that thing so I can get the the shock bracket bolts access to them okay this is the park brake bracket I'm gonna loosen it and it is pretty hard there it goes there it is right. and let's do the other one right here make sure it's in there that just doesn't want to go in there very good ah shucks I don't want to strip that thing you know what it's all right got it in there better this time let's see if I can crack it loose all right. Boy, that's a tough one. Oh, shucks. But it's coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, huh. I think that one maybe was put in there with. Yeah, definitely put it in there with Loctite. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay, let's go after the other one. All right. Let's check it out. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, oh, oh, okay. You just move it out of the way a little bit. All right, I get it. Just enough to keep it out of harm's way, right? Oh, yeah, I see. Good idea. Okay, we're gonna go after that one and that one. Get break those guys loose. Okay. I think I'm gonna need a cheetah bar. Let's see. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Yep. Uh, I think I wanna come out very good. 
Now let's finish that off with a wrench. Right. Yep. There it is, see, look at that. And you think I can get it out of there? Huh, you think I can get it out? No. Why not? Oh, there it goes, okay, good. Okay, and right there. All right. Okay. I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna go after that. That bolt up top. That's all there is to it. I gotta do that one. I went ahead and just removed the upper shock uh, bolt and then uh, I removed the uh, shock bracket and then pulled everything out in one piece. So here I am just removing the upper left shock mounting bolt and just getting the bolt out of there. It was really a long bolt and it took me a long time to get it out of there. I kept working it till I ran into the wall on the other side and I could not get the ratchet off that bolt right there. I had to reverse the ratchet and uh, start screwing the bolt back in, but I couldn't do it, just couldn't do it. Shucks. Really? No. I just kept working it and working it until finally I got the ratchet to reverse and I was able to uh, screw the bolt in enough where I could get the ratchet off and then put a wrench on it and get it off. Okay, this is a story that must be told. While I was working on the, the left side, I removed the uh, OEM uh, parts, the uh, shock mounting bracket and the OEM shock, and I pulled them off the side. Then I grabbed the new uh, convertible comfort lift bracket and I went to mount it up there and the holes would not line up. I could not get them to line up. So I put the shock mounting bolt on top and I put the shock mounting bolt uh, on the, uh, uh, the convertible comfort lift and I tried to line it up again and it would not line up. Uh, I got frustrated. So uh, I took the shock off and tried to line that bracket up all by itself again and it would not line up. To the point where I thought maybe they sent me the wrong bracket, but they didn't. They sent me the wrong, the right bracket. So I got uh, frustrated and I threw in the towel and said, uh, after working on it for about an hour. Uh, so I went around to the other side and said, oh, I'll just forget about this side, I'll go to the other side. So I went to the other side and uh, I removed the uh, upper uh, shock mounting bolt and I loosened the uh, the lower one and as I was pulling out the uh, uh, shock mounting bracket bolt I come to the last one and it was under pressure and I didn't know it so when I pulled it out uh, things popped and kind of startled me a little bit but I didn't think much about it so then I went and I pulled all that stuff off to the side I went and got the new convertible comfort lift bracket and I stuck it on there and everything lined up perfect. What the heck, you know? And so I, I put the lower shock mounting bolt in and the upper shock, everything is all loose, but it all, all was, the bolts all started screwing in perfectly. And I thought, well, why doesn't this side do that? So I went around to this side and I got the convertible comfort lift bracket and I lined it up and it lined up perfect. Put the lower shock mounting uh, bolt in, put the upper shock, everything lined up perfect and I just hand tightened them in there. And the moral of the story is make sure you remove both sides OEM parts first before you attempt to install the new stuff. All right, let's go check the right side. I'm going to go start breaking some of these bolts loose. I am going to break this uh, shock, lower shock bolt loose. I'm going to break that uh, upper shock bracket mount bolt loose. And remember, this is where I had that incident where I was removing the last uh, bolt from the shock mounting bracket and uh, it was under pressure. And these two uh, lower shock bracket mount bolts. And also I'm going to go up top up there. Also, I'm going to go up top up there and 
break the upper shock bolt up up there loose wherever it's at I went up there and removed the upper shock mounting bolt and the lower shock mounting bolt was already cracked loose then I just went in and removed all three bolts from the mounting shock bracket and then it all came out in one big piece all right one last check Let me go inside here and uh, check it all out okay got the new comfort convertible comfort lift right here brand spanking new and uh, I got it on the highest position there's the uh, two bolts right there one there and one underneath there there's two there and uh, got the upper one right there the lower shock mount right there and the way I got it set up is uh, the bolt the bolt has a washer welded to it the spacer uh, a washer and then into the boss right there this is the left side now all right now let's go up and check the top left side mount okay there it is right there all right on the uh, far right side there got the bolt with the welded washer on it got this thing facing towards the front of the motorcycle and got a spacer right there and it's a severical bearing right there so it's able to do that okay let's go over now to the right side and check it out This was much easier to put on the right side. We got the two uh, comfort lift bolts put on and it's in the high position. And we've got the upper one put on there. And we've got the upper one put on up there. And we've got the sh lower shock mount here. And it's the same exact way as the left side. It's got the bolt. And the bolt has an automatic washer welded to it. The spacer and the washer, and it goes into the, the boss right there. So now let's go up and check the upper upper shock mount. Now we'll head up to the upper shock mount here. Okay. And we've got uh, the upper bolt, and we've got the washer that's connected to the bolts, of course. And it goes through to the spacer right there, and then into the frame, screwed into the frame right there. And we've got this thing here facing towards the front of the motorcycle, and uh, there's the spherical bearing. All right, while I have the wheels off, I had time to clean the insides here uh, yeah I clean the insides and I wax the outsides and clean them really well and here I am just replacing the left side wheel and just kind of tighten them down get ready for the final torque and uh, then I did the right wheel doing the same thing just put it on and tighten it down getting ready for the final torque I'm gonna jack it down got my level right there I'm just jack it down a little bit at a time Something broke. I can tell you that right now. It's 
something twisted. Looks like this extension broke. A bat watch. Yep. <laughs> extension. Extension broke right off. We'll take a pause here. All right. Got another extension socket. There, you heard that. Okay, let's go to the other side. It's serious, okay? Here we go. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell you uh, what I heard about these shocks. Uh, first off, they're made in the USA, and uh, they're a premium shock, of course. And uh, the body is a CNC machine of 6061 uh, aircraft quality aluminum, hard anodized uh, body. It has a four inch uh, piston travel here. It's a 13 inch shock with a 4 inch piston travel which is pretty darn good. The, uh, 14 inch, uh, the next gen 14 inch uh, shock has also has 4 inches of travel and that's one of the reasons why I bought it. I wanted to just have a 13 inch because that's what's uh, OEM on my bike. So my 2020 drag glider is a 13 inch shock. So I wanted a 13 inch shock and I got a bonus with the uh, four, uh, 4 inch travel. It has a severical bearing uh, right there. Uh, in the eyelet here where it helps uh, eliminate uh, binding. When you have a rigid mounted shock without the severical bearing, uh, when you turn uh, left or right with your tri-glide like that or whatever bike I guess, when you turn left or right uh, it creates uh, a bind because the subframe and the swing arm uh, have some flex to them as you're making those turns like that and the severical bearing uh, helps uh, to eliminate that. Once these are tightened down it's going to make for a more a comfortable ride and eliminate that bind. It's going to allow the uh, subframe and uh, the swing arm to uh, do what they want to do. So it can smooth you out and make you more stable uh, in the corners and absorb bumps uh, correctly and so on and so on and so on. Anyway, that's what I heard uh, about these shocks. That's why I bought them.